Welcome to Foundational Bible Teachings. In this video, we're going to take a look at the truth about divining arts. A lot of people watching this video are going to say, come on, these practices can't all be bad. Well, let me ask you something. Is there a limit on the number of lies that can exist? And how many truths can there be? Exactly. This video will help you prevent demonic attacks by not partaking in forbidden practices by God. So when you hear the terms we will go over, you'll know it's a big red flag. We'll look at the Bible verses to back it up. Let's get right into it. Divining arts have been around for thousands of years. These oracles of the different occultic divining arts were common in ancient civilizations and anyone could have consulted them for a fee. In the Bible, there are numerous stories about prediction tellers. These include prophets, seers, witches, one working with familiar spirits, wizards, soothsayers, astrologers, stargazers, monthly prognosticators, etc. Some were God-sent, some were self-made. All these are popular in the world today. Psychic hotlines are heavily represented on television with testimonials to their amazing ability to give people accurate details about their past and predictions about their future. It's a $4 billion industry. People just want to know. But why? For the sake of knowing, they're curious, they're desperate, they want an in for their future. First off, a simple definition of a psychic is a person who has strange mental powers and abilities, such as the ability to predict the future, to know what other people are thinking, or to receive messages from the dead. A person who has psychic powers. Divination, the act of divining, of foretelling future events, or discovering things secret or obscure by the aid of superior beings or by other human beings. Fortune teller, a person who is supposedly able to predict a person's future by palmistry using a crystal ball or similar methods. Horoscopes, a forecast of a person's future, typically including a delineation of character and circumstances based on the relative positions of the stars and planets at the time of the person's birth. Tarot card. Tarot card reading is a form of cartomancy, whereby practitioners use tarot cards purportedly to gain insight into the past, present, or future. They formulate a question, then draw cards to interpret them for this end. Palm reading or palmistry. Palmistry is the pseudoscientific practice of fortune telling through the study of palm, also known as palm reading. Caromancy, Carology. The practice is found all over the world with numerous cultural variations. Clairvoyance. The supposed faculty of perceiving things or events in the future or beyond normal sensory contact. Mediums. A person claiming to be in contact with spirits of the dead and communicate between the dead and the living. Numerology. Numerology is the study of particular numbers and the belief that they may have special significance in a person's life. Astrology, the study of movements and relative positions of celestial bodies interpreted as having an influence on human affairs and the natural world. Seance, a meeting at which people attempt to make contact with the dead, especially through the agency of a medium. Necromancy, the supposed practice communicating with the dead, especially in order to predict the future. Tea leaf reading is a method of forecasting the future and learning more about your destiny or faith by examining the loose used tea leaves inside your cup. The origin of this spiritual act derives from the birthplace of tea, China. Ouija boards. A Ouija board is a board with the letters of the alphabet written on it. It is used to ask questions which are thought to be answered by spirits of dead people. Soothsayer. A fortune teller. A prognosticator. One who undertakes to foretell future events without inspiration. Joshua 13.22 Balaam, also the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword. Witch. A woman thought to have magic powers, especially evil ones. Exodus 22, 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Wizard. A wizard that is well above a magician, usually of great age and knowledge, and ranked of greater skill than a shaman or enchanter. A conjurer. An enchanter, a sorcerer. Leviticus 20, verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. Leviticus 19, verse 31. One, regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 20 verse 27. A man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. A necromancer is a conjurer of the dead. Strictly speaking, necromancy is the practicing of conjuring the spirits of the dead for divination or prophecy. Although the term has been applied to raising the dead for other purposes. 
one who inquires of the dead. In many ancient nations, there were jugglers who professed to be able, by incantations, to call up the dead from the underworld, consult them on the mysteries of the present or future. 1 Samuel 24, verse 3 to 8. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah even his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And the servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. God should be our guidance, not his creation. Horoscopes may appear to be harmless, but they may become addictive. Isaiah 47, 13, Thou art wearded in the multitude of thy counselors. Let now the astrologers, stargazers, and monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Verse 14, Behold, they shall be as a stubble. 15 goes on to say, None shall save thee. Reading horoscopes or another form of accepting and honoring occult practices that God has clearly condemned. These are written by people who do not believe in God and thus practice these ancient divining arts of pagan deities. Having said this, we see where the faith and trust of these people is put in. Deuteronomy 13 verse 1 to 5. God is testing you concerning diviners. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after these gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul basically to keep God's word and to not deviate from it. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Now, God will allow deception to go through a prophet for the people to be deceived. Verse 19 goes on to say, And he said, Hear thou therefore the words of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Where with? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. There are two sources of signs and wonders, God and Satan. Romans 15, 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Also, Satan can work through all power and signs and lying wonders. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Jesus warned of false Christs and false prophets. Mark 13 verse 22. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Definition of a sign, a wonder, a miracle, a prodigy, a remarkable transaction, event, or phenomenon. Definition of a wonder, that emotion which is excited by novelty, or the presentation to the sight or mind, of something new, unusual, strange, great, extraordinary, or not well understood, something that arrests the attention by its novelty, grandeur, or inexplicableness. Man seems to be bent on witnessing signs and wonders. John 4:48 states, Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Matthew 24:24. 24, 24. 
For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Much of the mystique and lure of modern psychics is the proof of their claims and information through various alleged supernatural manifestations. People often trust psychics because of their persuasive demonstrations. The history of psychics is littered with cases of proven fraud. Faked psychic phenomena may involve stage magic or sleight of hand. It is possible that Pharaoh's magicians used common magic tricks to duplicate the first three plagues God gave as signs through Moses in Exodus 7 through 8. Professional magician James Randi, whose stage name is The Amazing Randi, has publicly exposed a number of psychic spiritualists, channelers, and charlatans. One of Randi's first targets was Israeli psychic Yuri Giller, tested by Stanford Research Institute, now SRI International for his powers to bend spoons and levitate objects. Randy successfully demonstrated the tricks were very simple. Dan Corum, a Christian illusionist, has also used his talents in stage magic to debunk a number of fake psychics. The likelihood of fraud and fakery is one reason the Bible warns against relying on signs and wonders, as evidence for truth claims or proof of supernatural powers. Some psychics will claim that their powers are consistent with the Bible and come from God, even offering convincing demonstrations as proof of their supernatural ability. Jesus, however, warned his followers not to seek signs, explaining that his resurrection, the sign of Jonah, would be the only verifying miracle upon which believers can rely on. Matthew 12, verse 39 and 40. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. For proof that their gift is of God, some psychics may point to colorful examples of accurate predictions. Much of the accuracy of physics may be attributed to their use of the law of averages, cold reading techniques, and even the use of private investigators. Rather than celebrated random examples of some accurate predictions, the Bible requirement for a prophecy from God is 100% accurate accurate. Deuteronomy 18, 20-22 But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Christians also recognize that even real examples of spiritual manifestations would not prove the phenomena is harmless or from God. The Bible warns of demons, seducing spirits and doctrines of evil, and doctrines of devils. In 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. In 1 John 4 verse 1, believers are warned, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Faith in psychics can not only be spiritually, but emotionally dangerous as well. Followers can become totally dependent on their psychics for making even simple decisions. Psychics, in turn, can easily use their influence to control and take advantage of their clients. As we can see, the world has its own diviners and the different systems associated with it that God seems to mock at. God reveals his mind of what he thinks of you, either practicing or going after it. God's explicit warning against such practices. Deuteronomy 18 verse 9 to 15. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations, which thou shalt possess, hearkened unto observers of times, and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. Like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. In conclusion, the Bible might scaringly become more up-to-date than you may think. It might be more up-to-date than any other book around. Actually, the Bible is way ahead of its time because of its prophecies. Here are a few closing verses. Jeremiah 27 verse 9. Therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon.
Isaiah 47 verse 13, Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Daniel 1 verse 20, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. God doesn't think much of these people who practice these crafts. If God doesn't think much of these people, maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't either. What do you think? So I have a question for you. Where will you spend eternity future? John 3.36 states, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I want you to know that God provided the way for you to go to heaven. John 14.6 states, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now is the accepted time. Today is your day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 states, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You may be asking yourself, how do I get salvation? Pray to God in your own words by believing what God said about obtaining salvation. Believe in your heart, not your head, what you are saying to God. The ABCs of salvation. A. Admit you have sinned against God and confess your sins to Him for forgiveness. Romans 3 verse 10 states, As it is written, there is none righteous no, not one. Romans 3.23 states, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 1 John 1 verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. B. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and that God raised Jesus from the dead. Romans 5 verse 8 states, But God commandeth His love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 and 4 For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. C. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and call upon Him. Romans 10 verse 9 and 13 If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember, salvation is a free gift of God's grace. It is not of works. It is not a church membership. It is your relationship with God that created heaven and earth and everything in it. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 state, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Receive Jesus Christ and believe on His name to be a child of God. John 1 verse 12 states, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Your choice, as Israel was given the choice between life and death, even so, I now put the same before you. Deuteronomy 30 verse 15 and 19. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Remember, Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Acts 16.31 Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.